movement from his headquarters in Chicago where he preached separation of blacks from whites and formation of a separate all-black nation within the United States. He advocated abstinence among his followers from pork and tobacco and alcohol and encouraged establishment of separate schools and businesses. He built the black Muslims into a financial empire with real estate holdings, supermarkets, and restaurants across the country. We visited at his Chicago headquarters in 1973, two years before his death. We are now inside Mr. Muhammad's home. We want to thank him for being so gracious in extending this opportunity for us to explore with him the full meaning of the black Muslims. He has written a book called The Message to the Black Man in America, which will soon be published. And we have used this book to base a number of our questions to Mr. Muhammad. Mr. Muhammad, in this book you make a number of stipulations of which we would like to press you on in the course of this session today. One, you call for the separation of the Negro into a separate state, either in this United States or made possible by the United States. Two, you say that war between the whites and the blacks is inevitable. Yes. Uh, I'm very glad to answer these questions, Mr. Cobb. Uh, to you and to the world. Uh, the uh, most essential that uh, we should give the world the answer to such questions. I have been uh, preaching and teaching uh, the answers to these questions for many years. I give thanks first, Mr. Cup, to God, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, around 34 years ago now to me and uh, all that I have and been teaching it is from him and uh, it is very easy for us to recognize uh, the visit of this mighty one according to the time if we have the knowledge of the time that we are living in, we can accept and respect this mighty visitor in this part of the world uh, to fulfill that which was written of him, that he will come. And now he has come, and he has given out his purpose and his aims, as it also is written in the Bible and Quran, and therefore, I have nothing of myself in this answer. It is all from him. From him, you mean the messenger of, uh, of Allah? No, not the messenger of Allah. I'm the messenger of Allah. I mean from Allah himself, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Who preceded you as the head of the Muslims? Well, he was actually the beginner. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm taught by him. This uh, separation uh, we uh, begin uh, with, it is absolutely ne necessary. We have uh, lived for here in America for the last 400 years and have served our slave masters well before these past 100 years. And now the time has arrived that uh, we want something for ourselves. The natural spirit of God is moving in us and making us to think in such terms towards self. And uh, the doing for self is now getting into the very life uh, of the black man in America. We want to go for self. We want to be ourselves. This is aroused in us by God himself. And uh, to oppose it means nothing but death to either side. If we oppose it, it's death for us. If others oppose it, it's death to them. But even your own people oppose it, Mr. Muhammad, if I may interject a thought here. Uh, most of the civil rights leaders with whom I know you disagree, Dr. Martin Luther King, and Whitney Young, and Roy Wilkins, and James Farman, and James Farmer, and any number of others, all believe in integration, getting along with the whites, and moving into the same society. 
This is all due to their lack of knowledge of the time and what should be done in such time. They don't know that this is their time, that they should be separated or they should go for themselves. This is what I am trying to teach them. Teach them that this is the time that they should go for themselves. But is it not, would you disagree that it is the ambition and the goal of most Negroes in this country to become Americans? in every meaning of that word, to participate in our no. society, to it, be responsible, legitimate, honest citizens? Isn't that the goal of the overwhelming number of Negroes in this country? Uh, it may be uh, their goal, Mr. Cup, because that they don't even know, as I just said, uh, that this is the time that they should be going for self. And uh, lack of knowledge of the time, the lack of knowledge of self. The American so-called Negro, especially the leading class, do not actually know themselves. Excuse my voice as I am little, look like uh, trying to be a little hoarse this morning. But however, uh, I may clear it up later. <coughs> America's uh, so-called Negro as you know, have been kept in the dark of the truth of self and kind for now 400 years, and the only one to break forth this truth, it is God himself, as it is written. And the Bible, Ezekiel, and prophesied by Jesus that uh, the dead must rise, mentally dead, so our so-called leadership is as dumb as those they are leading to this knowledge. Therefore, they hope that they could have a place somewhere in the life of the white man of America and in his country and government. They seek that place. Not that they seek some portion of the country, or it's here. They seek only recognition of the white man as being uh, a citizen of America and uh, being his equal. And this is the wrong thing to be seeking. Since we now have uh, served our prophetic term of slavery here in America, and uh, now we have a taste of education of our slave masters uh, and their children, we don't go now to uh, the colleges and universities of the white man looking for degrees to uh, go back to him then for a job to work, live with him, or some uh, bread in the bread line. Well, what is wrong with that ambition, Mr. Muhammad? It seems uh, to be working uh, out and he growing. He was a subject, a servant all the time. He's not getting an equal place with his master by seeking a job. The only thing that he should seek now, since he admits that he's free, and he is free, he's not no more a servitor slave. But he, the he is free. The growing number of Negroes who have achieved prominence in all the fields of this country, economic, the social life, the arts, indicates that there is tremendous progress being made and the growing middle class of the Negro is tremendous today with a tremendous yes, purchasing uh, power. Mr. Cup, but uh, the progress is only being made to uh, uh, the position or status uh, of a more prominent servant and not a servant that is equal with his master in the owning uh, such thing is uh, place on this earth that he can call his own like his master. Then you say that people like the Dr. Ralph Bunches and any number of other Negroes who have achieved fame and fortune are still servants in this community? His fame and fortune is not his. That's the white man. He have achieved fame and fortune for the white man, not for his black man. All that the permanent, uh, I would say, uh, politicians, teachers, and uh, clergy, all has worked forward to the help of the white man, 
to achieve fame for him and his race, but not for themselves and their race. Let me take you to another area, Mr. Muhammad. Our government is spending millions of dollars in various programs mostly aimed at uplifting the Negro for better education, better job opportunity, a better share of this society. Now, isn't that a worthy commentary on the white man's role? If the slave master gets rich and richer, he can do better by his servant, his slave. But the slave is now, as I say, stands at the crossroad. He can go for himself. And why not uh, the master teach him how to go for himself and provide him with the necessary means to go for himself and not say, keep petting him around his uh, door well, let's assume, with a, a, a better suit of clothes? Let's assume, Mr. Muhammad, that your separation policy comes into effect. You will ask the United States to give you a state large enough to take care of all the Negroes in this land. That would be about one-fifth of the territory. Well, it's about 22 or more million of us. And then you would ask the United States for 25 or 30 years, according to your book, The Message to the Black Man, no, to operate this for 25 or 30 years. Not 30. 25. 25. And also to give you a land that's fertile and rich in minerals so that the Negro can Make a from the earth yes, sir. a justifiable living. Yes, sir. How would you bring an economic system? How would you get the people to start a new state? How would we get them to start? I'm asking you to put a start. You want the government to start the state for you, to build all the buildings and give you the education you, system, uh, and give you the business. We believe that you are obligated to start for, uh, 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 start us off in such state, according to your own uh, civilization, or set up for your own civilization. The means that you have to set your own uh, race up as an independent race here today, not what you had for uh, 500 years ago, but what you have today. Let me pause for just a moment, yes, Mr. Muhammad. We still have to interrupt for commercials on this Thank program. You. We'll pause for a moment and be right back with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mr. Muhammad, while we're talking about this very unique proposition of yours as expressed in the message to the black man and, of course, in all your philosophy, it's interesting to note that Abraham Lincoln once proposed or thought that all Negroes, perhaps for their own best interest, should be moved to a separate state. And Garvey, a great leader of the Negroes, many, many years ago, proposed that the Negroes have their own state. He was never too successful. And if I remember correctly, the communists in the early 30s, at the height of the Depression, urged that the Negroes be given their own state in an effort to capitalize on their following, I presume. None of these ever came to fruition or were ever successful or ever interested too many Negroes. How do you figure that you today can get Negroes to leave this country of theirs and go elsewhere? Well, I will not uh, have any power to do, I uh, don't have any power to do any more than those uh, teachers that uh, preceded me on the same subject. Uh, I, I myself don't have any power of myself to, to bring about such change. But God is with me to bring it about. How and has, the time is with me. How has your God, Allah, manifested himself in this presentation? He has manifested himself in the person of a man and with the uh, knowledge of the end of the history that we have been in, in service to white people and uh, the time uh, that we should be uh, separated from them. This knowledge was given by him. And uh, he is the one that is backing it up. It is not uh, me. I don't want you to look at me as nothing but a messenger. That's all I am, just a messenger to tell you what someone said to me. This law uh, that I have said to you concerning the separation, it is not say contrary to a prophecy. Uh, the sayings of the prophets concerning a separation of the slave and his master. It is not contrary. But where I come in at there of asking you if you would like to do something for yourself and admitting uh, this uh, justice from yourself, as this is nothing but justice, to give the slave something 
uh, to go with if you have uh, freedom. Uh, that America has never done for us. Our parents was never given anything to prove for self. Now, the time has come that God himself will intervene to separate the so-called Negro or the lost uh, members of the people, the black nation of the earth, uh, from their once slave masters. This is the time, according to the prophetic, uh, prophetic sayings and writings of prophets, that we must be separated. I uh, just want to ask you one question along the separation theory before we move on. There are approximately 22 million Negroes in the United States. There's an estimated 100,000 members of these who belong to your sect. Now, how can you expect 100,000 to dominate 22 million who don't feel the same way that you do? Oh, well, Mr. Cup, uh, uh, the number doesn't, doesn't mean anything. We uh, have history uh, dating back that uh, just uh, less people than that. Even the people that uh, dominated in the world today, your own race, they was not uh, started with even 100,000, only 59,000 was used to make uh, your own world. It don't make any difference about the number. It's only the one that uh, believing in the honest about accomplishing the aim and the purpose. If you had your choice of territory in this country, what would you select? Uh, well, I'm not saying this. I have said time and again, I will not say well, I would like to have a room in your house before ever you are willing to give me a room there. Mr. Muhammad, in your book you also say the war between the non-whites and the whites is inevitable. If you will permit me, uh, Mr. Cup, I would like to go back here to this uh, uh, separation again. All right. We uh, often uh, have been misunderstood on this. We know that uh, the uh, prophesy says that we should be returned or will be returned to our own. But uh, I have said here in this book, and uh, almost weekly I'm saying something about it, that if America wants to uh, ease their troubles, as this is the trouble that she is confronted with, it is her slave. I don't care uh, what uh, someone might uh, say or may say uh, about the problem, but the problem of America, it is her slave. And the solution has been given. And this is just only a little twist of the solution that I am uh, presenting to America today. That instead of all of this uh, uh, I would say mistreating the poor man crying out today for uh, more justice and better justice, better uh, recognition. Put him over here in some place. You have a house big enough to do so. Put him over here some place uh, to himself. Regardless to what he said, you know the truth. You know that he should be somewhere to himself, because you will never agree to all that he demands you uh, of. He, you cannot do so unless you want to become a uh, subject slave yourself, or that you want to get in the same status that your slave is in, to yield to all of his demands. That is uh, trying to uh, respect a once slave as it as your equal. You can't do that and keep your respect uh, in the world of civilized nation. But you can, uh, I should say, stop trying to force the ideal in the slave that he is as uh, good, he is as uh, honored, he is as much as uh, uh, the master cannot be uh, accepted as truth, even from the master. Would you I deny? I you, given, if you will just permit me, I will give you a chance then. By giving him a chance to sit in the house with you, 
and talk with you and your family or even marry your sons and daughters. That's not yet making him your equal. Uh, to prepare in your laboratories jobs for him, factories, build factories to give him a job, keep him at work. That is not making him your equal yet. He's still unequal. And it's a real ignorant thing to say he's my equal because I give him a social uh, status with me. This is uh, bad on uh, the white man's part even to offer his slave uh, integration in married, intermarried. It only makes him uh, worse in the eyes of the world and uh, his intelligence is uh, now, uh, has been, uh, uh, w I would say, uh, lost. And his decency of his society is lost, even by just offering the slave such opportunity. But Ooh. if he would go and offer his slave a place over here to himself, say, so boy, you have, uh, allow me to use this slave. Boy, you have been the good old plow boy for me. Now I'm going to let you plow for yourself. Here's a mule, here's a plow. I will furnish you uh, plow tools until that you are able to pay for them or uh, make them yourself. You don't think that the white man really thinks of the Negro as boy anymore? That this I said, well, has allow me so to use the word, ago. but he still calls them boys in many parts of the country. You still refuse to acknowledge, though, that the tremendous progress of any number of Negroes in all the arts, in all the political world, in all the sports world, in the entertainment world, in education, these people are not the equal of the whites with their tremendous success? Well, if he has made progress in the way of uh, civilization for the white man or in the civilization of the white man, well, why object then to him going doing this for himself? Sure. Let him make a way, a way for now for himself. But don't you feel, Mr. Muhammad, that this success is generated among the Negro youth who look up to these people as idols? And they themselves take a place in the society as successful people, inspired by their own people who have yeah. made successes? Until he learned the truth. When he learned the truth of himself and of those who that he is worshipping, uh, then uh, he will go for himself. If I have the spirit to go for myself, I don't want to be a slave for you. I don't want you to uh, use me as a servant. I want to be my independent self. I want uh, some of this earth for my people like you. You came here and taken it by the knowledge and uh, power of your own uh, fathers from the Indian, and you made a great country out of it. Then you go back to my country and bring us here to serve you as uh, say free labor. Uh, for uh, 300 years, we have did that for you, uh, willingly or unwillingly, we did so, and our fathers. Now, for 100 years, you say we are free, and 100 years, we are not free. We are so blind, deaf, and dumb, we still look forward to you to make our clothes for us, get the cotton and the wool, go and uh, put it through the mills, and make cloth out of it for us, and we still sit looking at you do all of this for us. Mr. And Muhammad, even, if you'll pardon me, I must say that your interpretation of the Negro is far different than mine. You sound more like Governor Wallace when you say the Negro is deaf, dumb, and blind. You don't want to be linked with Governor Wallace as one no, of the outstanding No, I say races. that because God himself said it. It's written in the Bible and Quran. Wallace didn't like this. No, but he announces and enunciates the same uh, principle that you're enunciating. Well, the Negro is dumb well, and not he's saying to... what God in the Bible says. Well, the Bible says that we are blind, deaf, and dumb, and even dead. Well, many people certainly uh, will disagree with anything well, uh, that the world Well, they disagree with something. God in the prophets then. Only in your Bible, not in any other Bible. It's in your Bible. That the Negro is dumb and I blind. got mine from you. We'll have to pause for a moment, Mr. <laughs> Muhammad, for a message, and we'll be right back. Muhammad, I know you want to say a few more words before on separation before we go into yes, another Yes, sir, Mr. Cups, uh, I'm very anxious to uh, finish what uh, we started with on the separation. It is uh, very uh, uh, nice and uh, good 
uh, for uh, America uh, to prepare educationally her slave that she once had uh, in servitude. The education that we have acquired uh, from uh, white America, it will help us to begin to forsake anywhere on this earth that we may uh, prefer to go or stay. If uh, we are to stay here with you, we must stay in a separate part of America with you. And the education is still accepted. Uh, we need all the education, I must stop and say that, that we can of good education to help us to go for South. And as far as uh, our reaction uh, to uh, what we have acquired in the way of education, it doesn't mean that uh, we should now be satisfied to remain with you uh, just because that we have uh, now acquired more respect of self in the way of education and can do more uh, better service for you than we uh, have uh, in the past. The thing of it is, since we have acquired enough to make a step out of the house of bondage where that our fathers was enslaved or put in bondage, we should now go and you should help us to go and uh, provide the necessary means for us to continue going in the way of South. This would also give you a great and a good name. The slave, sent his, uh, slave master sent his slave off with the provision to keep going for himself. We need uh, modern tools now. We don't uh, need to apply a mule. We need a uh, tractor. And uh, we need the land, certainly, that will provide a living uh, and the necessity of life otherwise, such as building, uh, buildings and uh, other uh, machineries. We want uh, that we can go into as you have went into it, and uh, pull out of her treasures the necessary means for us to build a nation for ourselves. But is this consistent, Mr. Muhammad, with your position? You were saying about the Negro doing things for himself. Then you say the government must turn around and give them all this territory and operate it for them for 20 years. I think we so think they can the government is obligated. We have given her 400 years. And now we want to go for ourselves. How are we to get started? for ourselves if the slave master is not willing to provide the means for us to go free for ourselves. In your position on separation, did you feel that the Supreme Court made a mistake in 1954 when it ruled that segregation must end in the public school systems? No, I don't say the government made a mistake by saying the, uh, the kind of segregation that we have lived under should be uh, terminated, I don't think she made any mistake there. But I do think uh, the government is making a mistake now to try to hinder us from being separated. Since we have already lived on a segregation for the past centuries, Mr. now we would like to be separated and live over here to ourselves. Since we cannot get along with you in peace, let me take you into another area that we discussed at the opening of the show, Mr. Muhammad. That is your prediction in the book, The Message to the Black Man, that the whites and the non-whites inevitably must come to a war. Do you really feel that there must be a war between the races? If you will not submit to uh, uh, the law of justice, freedom, justice, and equality, and uh, submit to do good. Certainly. This is the time <clears throat> that uh, good uh, confronts us through the people and not evil. Your history uh, teaches us that you have always warred. In Europe, there was uh, once a uh, hundred year war, a thirty year war. And uh, there have uh, continued a war history 
of your race ever since you had civilization. But it Europe. isn't only the white man, Mr. Muhammad. Every man, white, red, yellow, has always engaged in war. This is much you of never the white knew, man. Uh, history has never uh, uh, given us any knowledge of a war between the uh, brown, yellow, black races before you. Well, the Chinese and the Japanese warred for many, many centuries, and oh. certainly the blacks in Africa had their tribal wars, and the Muslims and Christianity had their religious wars. But I mean, right. war has been a part of man right. ever since. And in your sphere of uh, ruling the people, since 6,000 6, years, you will mention what happens in the period of 6,000 years. Well, you are the boss there. You started there. You maintain that the white man, according to this book, has been on this earth only 6,000 years. Only 6,000 years. And that the years. black man was here many, many years, centuries before. We don't have no book for it. But the anthropological facts may differ with you, but this is, of course, according to your religion, right? It depends on the man who does the analyzation of this uh, 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 past history of our people, bones and rocks and whatnot. Your statement of uh, inevitable war is so reminiscent of what Red China has been saying, that the yellow race and with the colored race will, white, will fight the white race, that it's a little frightening that you would be on the same uh, beam, the same line of reasoning with him. I, I we, cannot, that further. we cannot move ourselves if we are there by God himself. In the beginning we are there, and you are there. Uh, in the very beginning, we cannot change nothing, and I'm not asking to, uh, uh, no one to accept any change that I would try and make, because I'm not trying to make one. Everything, Mr. Cup, that I say concerning uh, the truth, whether it's war, or whether it's uh, separation of nations, I have it uh, from Bible, Quran, from Jesus, from all the prophets in the past, from God himself, and uh, I'm not talking myself. I'm talking what God and his prophets say. Of course, Mr. Muhammad, Jesus, and all the other recognized religious leaders always preached love, not hatred. I take for an instant. Jesus, he taught love of his father. We used the name he used there. Taught uh, that we should love the Father. We should love the uh, Word, uh, the uh, teachings of God. We should love the man that loves God and loves the teachings of God. This was Moses' teaching to Israel: was to love thy God with all thy heart, soul, might, and strength. But you uh, are not taught to love the enemies. The nations that will not love your God and will not allow you to pass through us, not allow you to settle in your own land, you should destroy that nation or God will destroy them before you. This is Moses. Then the uh, God goes so far as to say himself that uh, <coughs> the uh, there was two brothers that he loved one and hated the other. God is the first hater. And Jesus uh, also seconds his father in these words, that unless you can hate your mother, brother, sister, father, pick up your cross and come follow me, you cannot be my disciple. You have to hate first there. He gives to us the old well-known uh, teachings there in Matthew. I think it's around Matthew or in John 1. Anyway, he's there in his teaching. Here comes again some more of uh, Jesus' uh, teaching. Uh, he mentions the same of the uh, two brothers. One hated, another loved. To verify his own hatred of the evil people. He did not declare himself as being a lover of all men. He could not be the representative of God if he loved all people, because some people are evil. And a time of judging and uh, meeting out the uh, senses to the evil and uh, uh, the country uh, people of God is also on the page of history that these prophets put there for us to read and study. 
Moses did so, and now comes Jesus, he d who uh, covers his spear of uh, uh, delivering the message to Israel, a final message, and then denounces Israel as being enemies of God, and that a, a day of judgment is set for your execution. All of this is given right there out of the Bible that is put in the words of Jesus. And uh, we continue to uh, have this, and then the beginning, we have it, Moses uh, addressed Israel, and uh, Deuteronomy there, saying to Israel that in the very beginning, when we speak of separation, that God separated the sons of Adam. If God saw it more best than peaceful to separate these sons of Adam, brothers, these sons represent brothers. They can't live together. We separate the very sons of Adam and give them a place on the earth and set boundaries for them that they cannot uh, be entering in and out of the other uh, uh, country without uh, permission. Uh, boundary means that uh, you must have permission to come in my part of the country. And now, all of this is set forth to us in the Bible in which the Christian say we should believe. If the Christian don't believe in his own Bible, uh, the saints of his own Bible, how can he preach to us to believe in it? If the Christian don't want to abide by the book that he represents is from the prophets of God and their saints. How can then he force us?